what we saw uh, following, you know, the COVID-19, you know, or during the COVID-19 pandemic and the ways in which um, health messaging was approached is that the government really did take a reactive approach. Yep. And in engaging with multicultural communities and culturally and linguistically diverse communities, it would really pay off to take a more proactive approach yep. in learning how to best engage, what forms of communication are most effective, um, even down to the types of technologies that culturally diverse communities use. I think that the response really demonstrated that there was um, you know, less understanding than what was required in order mm -hmm. to engage in, in an effective way. So this would require investment in taking a more proactive approach yep. and in really learning from the lesson, taking that key moment Mm. And turning it around to taking um, you know, that more proactive approach, and in, in you know learning and understanding the best ways to engage with these communities, um, particularly as our um, communities yep. become more and more diverse and more and more multicultural. So that's a factor too, and I, I, I want to um, explore that it extends beyond periods of public health emergency, right? That's around health literacy in general in Western Sydney, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. I think that it's definitely seen um, across the board and it would be reflected in some of the health outcomes, I'm sure, that we'll discuss across, yes. um, you know, across the region. It would. Yeah. And I look, I thank, and thanks, Rhonda, I agree. And, I, and you just hope that some of the learnings that occurred there actually put into place, Tom, mm -hmm. because it's a pretty dire picture. Yeah, look, uh, I mean, when you look at the health of Western Sydney, uh, um, residents, it's not great. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, highlighting, uh, you know, diabetes, which yep. is a lifestyle illness, and that's a confluence of things. It's not only poor health literacy, but it's also poor walkability. It's the fact that we've got, um, you know, fresh food deserts across Western Sydney where it's easier to get fast food than it is to get good food. Yep. And so there's that big question in terms of health. When we talk about spending, we're often focusing on infrastructure on staffing and on that really pointy end mm -hmm. but there's also the question of preventative and how particularly around health literacy we're able to build that and i mean as well as that when we look at western sydney there's significantly higher rates of comorbidity yeah in western yeah. sydney and that's a person having uh, two or more long-term illnesses so yeah. if you take for example diabetes and marry it with uh, you know, heart disease, mm. it then plays out in terms of poor living outcomes, poor yeah. employment outcomes, poor income outcomes, and just perpetuates. 